today we're going to export a HANA system uh, because we're in a scenario where we have a, a HANA system that's a proof of concept and we want to export that HANA system to another environment. Now in our case, the HANA revision that we're using in our proof of concept is actually SP10 and we want to move this to an environment that's actually SP9. So using the HANA database backup restore tools on an option, we want to use the software provisioning manager to export the ABAP system. We'll then ship it across to another system uh, and do the import process as a separate process. So again, I have the software provisioning manager. I'm running a, a service SL toolset 1.0, SWPM is support package 8, uh, patch level 4, which is the latest and greatest SWPM. Uh, per the copy guide, what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to the HANA database, system copy, source system based on ABAP. I'm going to skip export prep, I'm going to skip table splitting, and go right to the database instance, export. The export prep and table splitting is really required if I want to do an, a, a simultaneous import-export. Uh, but in this case, I don't, you know, I have to, I'm, we're going to ship the data files uh, via FTP on a later date and time, uh, and I just want to have an export of the system available to me to reuse whenever I feel like. So I have the database instance export, I hit next. And I am signed into the Windows app server. So this is a uh, SAP system that is a, a Windows app server, HANA database. It was previously a Windows SQL system. Uh, but we went ahead and migrated it to Windows HANA. Uh, so we went ahead and found the right profiles. We hit next. Password. So now we're going to have to select some options for the export. Now that we've done our, our hostname account login, we're going to go ahead and uh, have some options here. We'll get started with the export process. So the export location, I've got an export location. Uh, it is the, uh, the Cardinal Sin export, uh, export location in that. Uh, it is on the same drive as my database because that's where I have the disk space. In a real world scenario, in a non-lab scenario, this is a non-production system, this is a lab system, um, you know, you wouldn't, do, you wouldn't do this in a production scenario. But in my case, I, I need, uh, the only place I have with disk space is, is the same drive as the database, so I'm going to do that export. Just wanted to let everybody know that this is typically a no-no uh, to do this. Uh, and as I was thinking that, you know, this, that database was the SQL database, so it's not even the database we're using anymore. I'm going to skip DDL because this is really an out-of-the-box system. There's no BW. It's just an ERP system. Uh, and I've already ran the ABOP report, uh, SMIGR, create DDL report, and everything was cool there. So I don't need to do any of the DDL. Target data database, again, is HANA. So I'm currently Windows on HANA, and my target database is HANA. Uh, I'm not going to select Start Migration Monitor manually because I want to let the tool do that. If you're in a situation where you know best and you know what you need to do, you can start the migration monitor separately. Uh, we may run a video series just on that alone because that is a complex topic. But it has everything I need here. I have my source DB is, is a HANA database and it's sitting on this HANA appliance. Um, I click next. It's going to be a new export from scratch. Hit next. Uh, database, this is basically the R3 size check. It's going to use stats, which is totally fine. Again, this is a HANA, a HANA system. Um, so we're good there. Next, uh, number of tables to be extracted, 10. That's uh, largest tool, that's fine. Package size limit, I like to change it to two gig. Uh, seems to be a little bit more efficient, at least in my experience, our scenarios. Uh, table input file, this would be if I have an input file that I want to use from a previous, list, a previous export or saved one from previous time, I could use that here. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Um, so parallel jobs is good. Um, we're not going to do parallel import export. That's totally that's what we want. And we're not going to use uh, additional hosts, and we're not going to start the migration monitor manually. So, because I said um, I wanted to have the the sum uh, FWPM start the migration monitor, I now have these selection criteria. If I wanted to start migration monitor manually, this screen would not have appeared. So we're going to sort by size. Is fine. Hit default. 666, everything's good. No need to customize sort order here. No need to get fancy again. Our scenario is we're just doing an export for an import later. We're not on a time crunch and we're not doing this for production server. All right, so we have everything, uh, summary of everything that we selected. We're gonna go ahead and hit the next button. 
uh, and that starts the instance export process, which will go ahead and begin creating a directory structure uh, in the directory that I specified. And again, this was a SQL server, uh, so when I saw those directories earlier, I thought they were live, but they're not. They actually are not in use anymore, uh, which is great. So uh, export, ABAP, we can see some properties files here in the data directory. We'll start to see some, um, some information here, as well as in the DB directory, HDB. There'll be a couple files here created shortly by the R3Size check tool. So uh, it's building out the files it needs through the R3 load control files, uh, the control executable. Uh, it'll then run R3Size check. So we'll check back in here in a moment. All right, so we, as we continue with our export, um, we basically, we have Software Update Manager. It ran the export ABAP, which creates a lot of the control files that you needed, uh, run the size check, and then it, uh, uh, now we're running the migration monitor. So if you remember before, we decided to run the migration monitor uh, via these SWPM. We chose not to run it manually. And again, it's in, in, it's in um, if you've never done the SWPM before, if you've never done the MIGMON, uh, go ahead and run it like this now, and then go back through and look at the properties file and sort of dissect what happened and what did it do. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at that real quick. So the first thing what we'll do is we'll go ahead and navigate the export directory. Uh, so you'll see it creates an ABAP folder, uh, data and DB, and you can see it hammering through some files now, um, the tables that are actually being exported, okay? Uh, within the DB folder, we have the TBL files, uh, which give it uh, the, the, the statements that it's going to run, and then we have our row store list. So it's a very, very simple structure that's been exported. Uh, if we go look at the SAP inst dir now, let's see if that was in mine. Uh, nope. So let's go ahead and go to C, uh, program files, SAP inst dir, netweaver, htb, copy export abop. So here's the export state dot properties, and this is a uh, status file. So we know that uh, the symbols here mean it, it has been done or is not done uh, with, with the equals plus sign or equals zero. Uh, equals plus sign, I believe, is that it still has it to, uh, still has to do. Uh, so we can see everything is still processing in this folder. Um, if we go look for the MIGMON properties file, let's go ahead and go down there. So there's the export mi mi properties file. We can see that it's DB type. Uh, Ahana, this is the export directory, uh, the installation directory, order by directory, R3 load path, uh, job number is five, uh, monitor timeout, trace D cluster, MIGMON control, six and six, and there we go. So, you know, had we not uh, started this uh, through some, I mean, through SWPM, we would have had to build this properties file from scratch. So again, if you know what you're doing and if, you, if you're an expert, then you're probably not watching this video. But for those of us that are learning SWPM, learning how to export systems, this here is the, uh, uh, is, is the file that was built. And this is what's being used to run the export right now. Now, we also have, um, the guides as well that we can use. So uh, I have the guide pulled up here. I'll go ahead and post it in the comment section as well. Talking about the export monitor and how you can start it manually, uh, which we know is an option. Uh, here's an example of some of the command directories. So the, the SWPM directory, these are all the parameters that you can set, by the way. I'm just kind of scrolling through quickly. The, the point here is not to show you each and every option, but to help you find the right information. So I will post this, a link to this guide talking about the uh, migration monitor, migration mo monitor properties that you uh, can define, and the export. All right, everybody, so the uh, migration monitor completed. Uh, all the jobs ran successfully, and everything is wonderful. So we can go ahead, and uh, you can see here we have uh, the feedback form here that you can fill out through the web browser to send a feedback to SAP, which we always recommend. Um, if we do a little investigation, uh, we can see that there is uh, an ABAP folder now that the data has been exported into. Um, you can see the different files that have been created. The .0123, those are the actual exports of the tables. Uh, the TOC files are just that, the table of contents. Um, in the database directory, you have your TPL files and your row store. So everything's kosher there. Now, if we go back to the um, SAP inst dir, uh, which is the working directory for SAP installation, we also get the log analyzer, 
uh, and you can see here that the export took about 45 minutes, uh, which is, this is a sm relatively small system. The export uh, end ended up being, um, uh, I think it was close to 20 gig, so not a big deal. Uh, very efficient. So here we have the uh, input for dialogues here. We can click on it. Oops, looks like I have a warning on my script because of IE. And then the time profile. So uh, I get high level information in my export uh, log analyzer.html. Interesting here though is I get a CSV file. Uh, this was a recent feature in SWPM where you kind of get a, a CSV file of R3 load activity, which I can then take that into Excel and quickly just use the time column and the job column and create a graph and kind of look at the distribution of jobs. You can also, uh, you also can get a CPU time, memory time, DV time, disk time, and then begin correlating events on your system over the period of the export and import to understand how can I efficiently break up the the export import. So you can see here everything was a very nice stair step. There was no jump up and back. That means the dependencies were calculated correctly, etc. Um, if I had seen this, you know, sort of drop down and then go back up, that would have been very inefficient, right? We want a nice consistent pattern of job processing and then it's a taper off. So everything here looked great. Uh, again, I used the R3 load jobs that CSV file uh, that was available within the, um, the working directory of SWPM. So the export is done. That concludes this video. Again, we did a uh, export of a HANA database from a uh, uh, Windows HANA environment uh, that will be imported on an environment that I don't know what it will be. But uh, thank you all for joining. Please post comments in the threads. Thank you. Have a good day.